Praise the Lord Jesus. It is yet another wonderful afternoon to be able to hear from the Lord. Without much ado, let us open to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. From verse 14. Hadi 17. 14 to 17. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Ufunuwa Yohana, sura ya tatu, mstari wa kumina nne, hadi kumina saba. Mtasoma? Na kwa malaika wakanisa nililoko laudotia, andika, haya ndiyo anenayo yeye alie amina, shahidi alie mwaminifu, na wakweli mwanzo wa kuumba kwa Mungu na yajua matendo yako ya kuwa hubaridi wala humoto ingekuwa heri kama ungekuwa baridi au moto basi kwa sababu una uvuguvugu wala hubaridi wala moto nitakutapika utoke katika kinywa changu kwa kuwa wasema mimi nitajiri nimejitajirisha Wala sina haja ya kitu nawe hujui ya kuwa wewe umnyonge na mwenye mashaka na maskini na kipofu na uchi Tamalizia katika Mathayo 6:22 23 Open to the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 and 23 Matthew 6 22 and 23 The lamb the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Matayo Suraya Sita Msariwa Srinambili Na ishina tatu. Saa ya mwili ni jicho. Basi jicho lako likiwa safi, mwili wako wote utakuwa na nuru. Lakini jicho lako likiwa bovu, mwili wako wote utakuwa na giza. Basi ile nuru iliyomo ndani yako ikiwa giza, si giza hilo. Hallelujah. Baba, tuko mbele zako. Father, we are before you. Nena nasi mchana wa leo. Speak unto us this afternoon. Na utubuse upia tena. Touch us anew. Ukiweza kurejesha yale yote ambao adui ya meaiba ndani ya maisha yetu. Restoring all that which the devil had stolen from our lives. Mana tunajua kwamba yeye siku zote ni muizi na muaribifu. Because we know that the adversary comes to kill and destroy. Lakini wewe umekuja kutupa uzima na uzima tele. But you have come to give us life and life in abundance. Siku ya leo. Today. Tunaomba mungu wetu utureje macho ambao adui ya mearibu. Our God we ask that you restore the eyes which the enemy had destroyed. That we may behold your glory. That we may behold your face. 
But we may behold the direction to which we are going. Because you have spoken to us that the lamp of the body is the eye. When the eyes are clean, the whole body will be filled with light. But if our eyes are destroyed, the entire body will be full of darkness. As it is, if our light is darkness, then it will be great darkness. Father, we ask that you help us. Restore us. Because it is your perfect will that we have eyes that can see well. You are a God that has touched your people. Heal them from infirmities. You have the power also to open our eyes. That we may see according to your purposes. Father, use us as weak vessels that all the glory may be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We continue with the series of our teachings the restoration of the bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please help me. It is a two-sided thing. You have to help me preach. Amen. Restoration of the body of Christ. The church as the body of Christ. He, she is referred to as the bride. And we have seen seven types of churches, seven types of brides. And this Laodicea is the seven church, the seven church which represents the church this church today that we are the body of Christ it is the latter church now if we look at the example of that picture it is not a very pleasing or attractive picture it is not very attractive even an ordinary man regardless of talking about the king of kings we have had so many weddings in this house and we see that the groom stands there and the bride usually comes from there all heads turn to her all heads turn to her how does the bride look like and the groom is also curious to check how the bride that I've fallen in love with looks like. Davis and Rebecca, your attestation is still very fresh. Na nafikiri pia Yusufu Joseph and Eileen, I'm sure your ears are keen to listen to this. We announce for the second time the wedding of Joseph and Eileen. If you're here, please stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Many weddings in the house of the Lord. And when Wednesday we received a revelation from the Holy Spirit that many more weddings are coming up in the house of God. And I believe the Lord is doing this and one of the reasons is that we may be able to focus on how the bride looks like. We saw on Rebecca's wedding how she was beautiful. But let us David. Let us tell someone like David or the groom 
Wakati unasubiria kumuona bibi harusi. When you await to see the bride. Na unaona picha kama hii ambayo tumeisikia. And you are presented with such a picture that you have read in Revelation 3. Kwamba bibi harusi badala ya kuja amevaa gauni nyeupe. That the bride instead of coming putting on a white garment. Nisameni kwambie kwamba aliingia yuko uchi. Pardon me for saying that she came in when she was naked. Inatisha it is caring. Inaogopesh. It is caring. Na bwana harusi atashangaa. And the groom was surprised. Na sio tu kwamba yuko uchi. Not only was she naked. Yuko kipofu. But also blind. Hiyo itamfanya bwana harusi ajiulize. That will cause the groom to ask himself. Huyu amekuwa nini? What has happened to my bride? Ni nini kimemtokea? What has occurred to my bride? Na sio tu kwamba yuko uchi na yuko kipofu. And as if it's not enough. Not only blind. Anakuja naked. A, yuko mchafu yani yuko 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 wretched yuko miserable. She comes when she is wretched and miserable. Yuko maskini amejaa tope hana viato nywele ziko vibaya. She is she comes in poor, wretched, miserable. It is not an attractive picture. Sasa wewe kama bwana harusi uliyejiandaa. Now you as a groom who is ready Na kanisa liko hapo kuangalia. And the church is turning their heads to look at the bride. Utasema nini? What will the groom say? Utasema nini? You as the groom what will you say? Asilimia sabini ya wanaume wa dunia hii. 70% of men in this world. Licha ya kusema sabini hata 95 In fact, I am under, 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 underrating. It's supposed to be 90 or more than 90%. Watasema mm sio huyu niliyempenda. They will definitely say she is not the one that I fell in love with. Amekuwa nini huyu? What has occurred to her? Amebakwa. Has she been raped? Amekutana na majambazi. Has she been attacked by robbers? Amechanganyikiwa. Is she mad? Has she run mad? Hana akili. Is she out of her mind? Mimi nasimamisha kwanza mtazamo wangu. I, I am first of all going to hold Everything. Just to find out what has taken place. Men, do you agree with me? If you agree with me, put up your hands. Eh? Ngumu sana. Hebu niambie ukweli utafanyaje kama ni wewe? Men, tell me the truth. If it was you, what would you do? Eh? Utafikiria mara mbili? I will think twice. Kwanza hata angevaa vibaya hata kama hatapendeza, lakini uone huyo mtu anakuja Now it is one thing for her to come in with tattered clothes or dirty clothes but if she comes in naked Kweli Watu watasema wewe ilikuwa kwaje People will ask her what happened to you Utaanza kuambia nilikuwa nilimpenda alikuwa binti mzuri msafi ana macho mazuri ana Sasa sielewi If you ask the groom what happened to her he will tell you I fell in love with a beautiful lady. I fell in love with a lady with beautiful eyes. I can't tell what happened to her. Utamkubali? Will you accept her? Tuseme ule ukweli. Let us speak the truth. Will you accept her? Utamkubali? Eh? Baba hebu niambie kidogo. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Tuseme ule ukweli wa ndani. Tuseme ule ukweli. Si rahisi kukubali maana ulipokutana naye mara ya kwanza mkakubaliana, akaja na sura nyingine, lazima ikutie mashaka. Speaking the truth, I fell in love with somebody else. So when she comes in in such a state, mm. I will doubt if it is her. Mwingine. Mwingine tuwe wa kweli tu. Tuwe wa kweli. Yaani kwa ma, kama ni mwana maombi anasema bwana amenijibu kabla sijakaa naye. Mm? Sema. Yaani angekuwa ni mwana maombi anamuomba ga Mungu mm. na likamtokea lililotokea. Kabla hajaona kitu kingine anasema bwana amenijibu kabla sijaishi naye. <laughs> He's saying if it if it is a prayerful groom then he will say thank God for answering me before I take her to my house. Kwa maana nyingine utamkataa hapo hapo. Eh? 
Amen. Because the time that I'm going to stay with her is longer than the short time that I've dated her. So I will deny her. Utamukata. Hata ukimpenda baba yako na mama yako wakweza baba watasema kwamba hatumtaki. And if you decide to take her, your relatives, your parents may say no to her. Kwamba huyu ni huyu ni huyu ni ni mkwe gani huyu? Because what kind of daughter in law are we getting? Wachungaji na wenyewe watasemaje? What will the pastors say? Ambao walikuwa supposed kufunga hiyo ndoa. The pastors who are supposed to unite the two. Yule bibi harusi anakuja. When the bride is coming. Hajavaa nguo yoyote. She is naked. Ametobolewa macho. Her eyes are pierced. Yuko mchafu. She is tattered. Wretched. Miserable. Yaani yuko hafai yuko kama toka la ajabu sana. Miserable. She is like a street a person on the street without na any hope. Na bwana harusi amejiandaa suti nzuri na kanisa inasubiri kumuona anaingia. The groom is putting on a very beautiful suit and the church is all awaiting to see her. Pastor Sule, kama niona funga hiyo ndoa utafanyaje? Pastor Sule, if you are in charge of uh, uniting the two, what will you do? Tunaahirisha kabisa na kuanza kukemea mapepo. We will postpone the wedding and get into prayer of casting out demons. Tutasema huyu amepagawa. We will say she is possessed. It is astonishing. Sasa fikiria sisi ni watu wa kawaida. Now think we are ordinary men. Sasa fikiria mfalme wa wafalme ambao ndio bwana harusi. Now consider the king of kings who is the groom. Jeshi la malaika wamemzunguka. The host of angels surround him. Mbingu yote inamwabudu. The entire heaven worship him. Na wanatarajia waone yule bibi harusi. And they are all anticipating to see the the bride. Alafu atokee hivyo. Then the bride appears in such a set. Hata kama ni mtu wa kawaida atamkataa. Regardless of whether it is a great person or an ordinary person. Sasa imagine they will deny. Consider the king of kings. Nakumbuka huyu anayesema haya maneno ni kwake bwana ni kwake bwana harusi. Remember the person saying these words he is talking about his own bride. Anasema mimi nitakutapika. He says I will vomit you. Just imagine. Tafakari hilo. Bwana harusi the groom wakati bibi harusi anaingia. When the bride is walking in. Yeye anasikia ile furaha ya kwenda na kumkumbatia na kumlaki. The groom usually feels the desire to go and embrace her and welcome her in. Sasa bwana harusi badala ya kufikia hiyo hali ya kwenda kumlaki na kumkumbatia anasikia kichefuchefu kwa sababu ya hiyo hali ambayo hiyo dada anaingia nayo No instead of feeling like going to embrace him to embrace her and welcoming her in the groom feels in himself like vomiting her out Just imagine Someone who loves you Mtu ambaye anakupenda Looking at you anakutazama he wants to vomit anatamani kutapika You are smelling bad. Yaani unanuka vibaya. You look wretched. Ume umechafuka chafuka. You are naked. Uko you are blind. Uchi. Uko uchi isitoshe ni kipofu. It's a terrible situation. Ni hali ambayo ni ya kuogopesha. I say I prefer you to be cold or to be hot. Akasema not look warm. Angalau ungekuwa ungechagua uwe baridi au uwe moto. Lakini hali hii ya vuguvugu So this is the status of the church. Sasa hii ndio hali ya kanisa leo. And people are saying Jesus is coming back. Na watu wanasema kwa Yesu anarudi, Yesu anarudi. He is coming back for his bride. Yesu anarudi kulichukua kumchukua bi harusi wake. He is not coming to vomit. Yesu harudi ili aje kutapika. No. Hapana. So instead of vomiting the Sasa, bride, badala ya kumtapika bi harusi, Jesus is raising an army. Yesu analinua jeshi of those who are willing. La watu ambao wana utayari to take care of that bride again. Wa kulilea ama kumlea bi harusi tena. Remember he loved her so much. Kumbuka anampenda bi harusi sana. Remember he died for her. Usisahau alikufa kwa ajili ya bi harusi. He's not ready to despise 
Yesu hayuko tayari kumsahau au kumdharau bi harusi. He's ready to vomit her. Hayuko tayari kumtapika bi harusi. He's trying again. Ana chukua mbinu nyingine. Trying afresh. Akifanya upya tena. And raising people na akinua watu who are ready to stand. Walio tayari kusimama. And prepare this bride again. Na wamwandae bi harusi huyu tena. Hallelujah. Amina. Hallelujah. Amina. This is how deep is his love. Sasa Upendo wa Yesu ni wakina namna hiyo. He is the only man who can truly truly love. Yeye ndio Bwana pekee ambaye anaweza kupenda si kweli. He hates divorce. Anachukia talaka. He hates separation. Anachukia kuachana ama kutengana. He was determined to marry this bride and he will marry her. Aliazimia kumuoa binti biharusi huyu na bila shaka atamuoa. But he cannot marry her in the status that she is in. Lakini Yesu hawezi kumuoa biharusi katika ile hali ambayo biharusi yumo nayo. So he is taking time. Kwa hivyo anachukua muda wake. Giving a new revelation. Akitoa mafunuo mapya. Or what we can do? Ya kile ambacho tutaweza kufanya. To prepare this bride. Ili kumwandaa biharusi huyu. And what number one? Na la kwanza We need to prepare the bride. Tunahitaji kwanza kumwandaa biharusi. By restoring everything that the enemy has stolen. Kwa kurejesha kila kitu ambacho ibilisi amekiiba. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. He is a God of restoration. Ye ni Mungu wa urejesho. He cannot fail. Hawezi kushindwa. When he loves someone, akimpenda mtu, he will fight for that person. Atampigania mtu huyo. Until he will put that person to the standard he wants. Hadi amrejeshe mtu huyo katika viwango vyake anavyotaka. So the topic of today is restoring the bride. Kwa hivyo somo la leo ni kumrejesha bi harusi. In the standard of the king of kings. Katika kiwango cha mfalme wa wafalme. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Restoring the bride. Kumrejesha bi harusi. If you see the church of today. Ukilitazama kanisa la leo. If you see born again people today. Ukiwatazama wakristo waliookoka leo. They are in this status wamo katika hali hii you see a person you wonder is this person saved or not unamtazama mtu unajiuliza maswali huyu jamaa ameokoka au vipi the person is not covered with the glory of god yani mtu huyo hajafunikwa na utukufu wa mungu the person is not covered with the power of god hajafunikwa na nguvu ya mungu the person looks miserable mtu huyo yani hali yake ni ya kuogofia he is a wretched person amechafuka kuharibika he is poor ni maskini he is blind ni kipofu yet he is the bride of the king of kings ili hali yeye ndio bi harusi wa mfalme wa wafalme silver and gold belong to her shaba na dhahabu ni za kwake oh hallelujah May the Lord help us. Mungu atusaidie. That we may understand that we have a busy job to do. Ili tuelewe kuwa tuna jukumu na kazi ya kufanya. We have a great work to do. Tuna kazi kubwa ya kufanya. That's why God is raising the fivefold ministry. Na ndio maana Yesu anainua ofisi tano zile. Apostles, mitume, prophets, manabii, evangelists, waangilisti, teachers, walimu, pastors, wachungaji. All of them. Hao wote. To prepare. Ili waweze kuandaa. To edify. Waweze kulijenga. This bride. Kumjenga bi harusi huyo the standard awe katika kiwango that is supposed to be ambacho anapaswa awe before the groom comes kabla bwana harusi hajarudi before the rapture kabla kunyakuo hallelujah hallelujah i say hallelujah amen if you don't say hallelujah i just go there and sit usiponyijibu <laughs> nikisema hallelujah ama nikitarajia amina basi mimi nitarudi nikae because when we say amen it means let it be so kwa sababu unaposema amina unamaanisha hivi acha iwe hivyo si ndio jamani yes tuko vizuri are we together ndio maana unanisikiliza mkisema amen When we say amen it mm. means that we are listening to you so we are responding meaning that we are following you Amen Amen Aha hiyo inatia moyo zaidi That is encouraging Acha nikwambie Let me submit to you Kazi ni kubwa sana The task ahead of us is big Kazi ni kubwa sana The task ahead of us is huge Ya kumrejesha huyu bibi harusi to restore the bride katika hali ambayo itafanya asitapikwe bali apendwe back to the state where the groom will not vomit her but will embrace her 
Because the groom has fallen in love with her. And he will not abandon her. But the groom cannot accept the bride in such a status. Tell your neighbor the task is huge. The first step of restoring the bride it is to restore her eyes. Are we together? Restoring her eyes. Because the first thing the, because the first thing the enemy did is to gorge to gouge her eyes so that she may not see what she looks like. Hata kama angepaka angemupa mafuta anafikiri ni mafuta kumbe ni mafuta imechanganywa na mkaa. Haoni tena hata jua. Yeye ataona tu amepaka mafuta kumbe amepaka tope. So it doesn't matter whether she is given good lotion or bad lotion. If she is given bad lotion which is dirty she will just take it and apply on her body thinking that she's looking good yet she's very dirty wakimtia nani majifu kwenye kwenye nywele hata jua when you put ashes onto her hair she will not know kumbe ameenda kutengeneza nywele kwa kwa saluni ya adui bila kujua wanampaka majifu wanampaka vitu vibaya it means she has gone to the enemy's salon to do her makeup and to do her hair. So the enemy will make sure she goes out of that place wretched and miserable for the groom to deny her. And because she is blind, she cannot check herself in a mirror. She will think she's okay. And that's why Matthew 6 says that the lamp of the body is the eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. When the eyes are good, then the entire body will be filled with light. But when the eyes are destroyed, the entire body will be in darkness. Now, if it is if it if darkness is your light, then that 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 darkness is great. And because the enemy knows that, always, always he gets into the business of gouging our eyes. So that we may not be able to see. And when we are blind, then the enemy will have a field day. We will not be able to get to our destiny. Ask your neighbor, do you have eyes that see well? Are you sure your eyes are able to see? Because you may have eyes but they can't see. That is what the enemy is fighting against always. Let me give you an example. Samson. Concerning Samson. Samson. God raised up Samson. In a family that was barren. He became a Nazarene, a Nazarite. During the time when the Israelites were under the oppression of the Philistines, God decided to help them. He raised up Samson. In a manner that the parents were expectant. He gave instructions to him Wazazi. and to the parents on how to bring up this young man because he came to destroy the enemy and to nudge Israel out of slavery. But when Samson grew up, he was a strong man. He had hair. And God had instructed that 
Samson should not shave Wale his head. He should not even take wine. Because he had an assignment to ya do. That is to deliver Israel. Mungu May God help us. Mungu na na bibi now see how God has a plan with the bride. But the enemy comes to snatch the bride. And to take the bride into a status that God will not be able to condone. The Bible says, Samson, na wake wa Samson involved himself with the Philistine women. Na wa Samson. And the weakness of Samson was exposed. His weakness was lust. Na wa he lusted after the women of Philistine. But when they attacked him, he was able to destroy all. Now, the Philistines sat down and they said, what should we do? To, dis to, to destroy the strength of this man. We shall use his weakness. And you know the story. Through those women, especially Delilah, she, she drew Samson to herself and she asked to know the secret behind Samson's strength. When Samson softened his heart, one day he revealed the secret. I am a Nazarite. I'm supposed to I'm not supposed to touch alcohol and neither am I supposed to shave my hair. Kama una assignment ya Mungu, if you have God's assignment, kuna vitu huruhusiwi. There are things you're not supposed to do. Wengine wanaweza wakafanya. Some other people can do them. Lakini wewe huruhusiwi. But you are not supposed to do them. Maana Mungu ana mpango na wewe. Because God has a plan with you. Wewe sio mtu wa kawaida. You are not an ordinary person. Wewe ni bibi harusi wa Bwana. You are the chosen bride of Jesus. Wewe ni mtu wa maana sana. You are very important. Tell your neighbor, do not mix yourself up. Let the people of this world do the worldly things. God has separated you for his purpose. There are things you are not supposed to do. When you do them, then you lose direction. You lose your destiny. Now, Samson, Samson's hair was shaved. Badai, Later on, mvamia, they attacked him. Mvamia, After having attacked him, kama zamani, bado Samson thought, just like it is, he still had his strength. Kumbe Yet, his strength had been taken away. Listen to me. The pride that we have read about in the book of Revelation 3 did not decide to, to get into that state. She didn't want to be naked. She didn't want to be wretched. She didn't want to be poor. But she was pushed into that. She faced very astonishing thing. Probably she gave the enemy a foothold and the enemy destroyed her so that the groom will deny her. That is what happened to Samson. When the Philistines attacked him, the first thing they did, they gorged his eyes. They gorged his eyes. Unaona sasa ule ufunuo tatu yule mwanamke wa ufunuo tatu yuko blind alitobolewa macho hajaamua lakini alizidiwa nguvu na adui siku zote adui atakuwa na nguvu juu yako atakufanyia vitu vya ajabu moja wako atakutoa macho Now compare that to Revelation 3 the story we read about the bride her eyes were taken away she was blind not because she wanted to be blind but the enemy overpowered her and when the enemy overpowered her, removed her eyes. See, every day the enemy has power over you. He will do things that you don't expect. Worst things. I remember King Zedekiah, they also gorged his eyes. Now, a king carrying the destiny of a nation, if his eyes are gorged, that means that 
the entire nation is powerless. After the king, king's eyes are changed. The, the temple of the Lord was destroyed. His own house was destroyed. Before they took away his eyes, they first destroyed his children. To get him, and then they got his eyes. And then they got his eyes. Now, if a king who is the leader of a nation has no eyes, that means that that nation cannot see, it is hopeless. After the king's eyes are taken away, and the church of God is taken away, then there is no hope for that nation. That is how they were taken into slavery. Look at the bride again in Revelation. She wasn't free. She was under bondage. So that the groom will not love her. But the, the groom knows all those things. And he has the final word concerning the bride. The church is battered. The church is battered every day, battered until when they are miserable and they are wretched, they are not attractive. But the groom says, and that's why I, I, I believe this and I say it every day Jesus has not yet come back Jesus is coming very soon very soon Harudi Jesus is if you see the message saying yes on Harudi Araka he is not coming back yet Harudi he's not coming back yet why how can he come back how can he return and yet the status yes, so of the bride is not attractive Jesus will come back Atarudi. he will come back definitely but before he comes back there has to be restoration of the bride the bride has to be prepared he has to be restored into a beautiful state Jesus will not come and look at a bride that has reproach and is shameful upon again Christian involving himself or herself in alcohol moving out into fornication and adultery all those things now why should Jesus come back for, for such now you as the groom says I can't accept such a bride in the same manner groom Jesus Christ is saying I can't accept such a church now what, what if Jesus looks at you and says I can't accept you how will you feel let us examine ourselves prepare ourselves as we prepare ourselves as a bride let us also prepare the body of Christ and bring her to the level that is acceptable where the Bible says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former glory the church is supposed to get to a level of glory that has never taken place before and that is the last end time awakening the church will be strong full of the glory of God she is where we are going the church will be clothed it will not be naked it will not be poor it will be the leader and it will be the leader in proclaiming news concerning the groom Until when everyone will desire to be part of the groom and will give their life to Christ that is what Christ is interceding about and that's the reason why he's tiring from coming back he's ready to 
send every resource yuko tayari kutuma nguvu to send every power yuko tayari kutuma upako to send anointing ili bibi harusi iandaliwe so that the bride will be restored na kwa wakati utakaofa at the appointed time ndipo atarudi then he will return bwana yesu asifiwe amen bwana yesu asifiwe amen kwa hiyo je unapenda arudi ama asubiri kidogo do you want jesus to return or to carry a bit subiri kidogo let him carry a bit ili tujiandae so that we may prepare ourselves haleluya amen haleluya amen haleluya maana kama atakuja angani hakika na kuambia hey, itakuwa ni hatari sana because when he appears in the sky then it will be terrible i tell you itakuwa ni hatari sana it will be terrible mungu akitusaidia asubiri kidogo tujiandae god's grace may it be upon us that christ may carry a bit Aturejeshe macho kwangu. Let him first restore eyes to us. Aturejeshe macho. Let him restore eyes to us. Samson alienda huko. Samson went where he went. Wakampatia kusaga ngano. And they asked him to grind wheat. Huko hana macho. While he was blind. Lakini akaanza kumlilia Mungu. He started crying unto God. Akaanza kumlilia Mungu. He cried unto God. Siku moja. One day. Wale wa Filistia wanacheka, wanafurahi, wako kwenye sherehe. The Philistines were mocking him. They were celebrating in, in a banquet kwamba yule ambaye alikuwa ameandaliwa kutumaliza amekuwa mtumwa and they were saying the one prepared to destroy us is our slave today amekuwa hana macho he has no eyes kwanza wamlete let them bring him atuburudishi let him entertain us oh mungu wangu samson akaja kijana fulani one young man came akamwambia unaitwa huko young boy came and told him samson you have been called kwa sababu hana macho because he didn't have eyes inabidi ule kijana mshike the young boy had to escort him lakini samson akamwambia but samson told her naomba unipeleke lead me naomba unipeleke lead me unisikishe kwenye nguzo put my hand on a pillar za hiyo hekalu the pillars that were ili nijegeze hapo that temple let me lean there Nijiegeze hapo. Let me leave there. Na huyo kijana akampeleka. And the young boy took Samson there. Uone restoration mahali hapo. I want you to observe restoration there. Alikuwa hana macho. He didn't have eyes. Lakini kuna mtu alimwazima macho. But there's somebody who loans Samson <laughs> his eyes. Mungu ana neno la mwisho. God has the final word. Samson alitobolewa macho. Samson's eyes were God. Lakini Mungu akamwazima macho. But God loaned Samson some eyes. Ili aweze kutimiza kusudi la Bwana. So that he may fulfill the purpose of God. Oh hallelujah. Mungu yuko katika restoration ya macho. The power is in the restoration of the eyes. Jinsi adui anakutoboa macho. See the enemy gouges out your eyes. Ndivyo Mungu anakurejeshea macho. In the same manner God restores your eyes. Anakurejeshea macho. He restores your eyes. Anakuongezea macho. He gives you more eyes. Sikiliza nikwambie. Let me tell you. Katika ufunuo 4. In Revelation 4. Biblia inasema. The Bible says. Wale wenye uhai wa ine, The four creatures with life wana wana mabawa sita the four living creatures have six wings na wana macho and they have eyes mwili mzima wana macho their entire bodies are covered with eyes hivyo adui anajua umuhimu wa macho see in the same way the enemy knows the importance of eyes na ile macho mbili anaitoboa he and he goes after the two eyes ndivyo mungu pia anakuonesha umuhimu wa macho in the same way god shows you the importance of eyes ah, wenye uhai wa ine wamejaa macho mwili mzima alafu wamejaa macho nje na ndani the four living creatures are full of eyes their bodies are full of eyes and within them they also have eyes kwa nini wana macho imejaa why are their bodies full of eyes jinsi utakavyoongezewa macho when your eyes are increased ndipo utazidi kufo, ku move forward katika kusudi lako you will be able to move forward in your purpose or destiny bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord jesus bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord jesus sasa unaweza ukasema now you may say kwa nini bwana amewapendelea hawa why has god favored this na kuwajazia macho nje na ndani and given them all those eyes within and without na sisi anatupatia macho mawili tu and he has only given us two eyes mbona hiyo ni upendeleo that is favoritism acha nikwambie let me tell you hawa wenye uhai wa ine these four living creatures biblia inasema kazi yao ni kumwabudu mungu the bible says that their role is to worship god wana muabudu mungu they worship god wanasema unastahili you are worthy to say you are worthy unastahili you are worthy 
And when they say that, the, 20, the elders, 24 elders, when they, those ones, fall and worship God, the 24 elders also fall. They remove their crown. They worship God. They are also choirs of angels. Listen to me, the secret. Sasa, now, these living creatures are only supposed to focus on God. Worshipping and focusing on God. Is that possible? The 24 elders, when they want to fall down, definitely they may tempt the focus the living creatures to also fall down. They will, they may turn. When the choir is lifting their voices to sing, they may turn. But because God does not want them to be distracted of their focus on him, that they may not turn left or right. Instead of turning, <laughs> he has put eyes behind them. Hallelujah. Amen. They worship God and yet God has put a provision that they will not turn behind because he has put eyes behind them. Because if they turn, they may lose the focus. Now, the highways of gold they may be tempted to look at them. I don't know, maybe they may hit themselves on feet along the way. But if their eyes on the feet, no need of checking. Because the eyes in the feet will just check. The eyes behind will see. The eyes in the hands will see. If I will lay my hands on you, and yet I'm supposed to worship God, Instead of laying my hands and looking at you, there will be an eye here. I worship while I'm doing this. Hallelujah. Amen. So that shows the value that God has placed on eyes. We ought to have good eyes. And that's why the enemy comes after the eyes. But regardless of that, the Lord will loan us eyes. He will increase eyes to us. Listen to me. Some people don't know why they get married. Others don't know why they get married. If you're a man, and you're focusing on the purpose that God has placed in your life for you to remain and focus in that family and get your destiny God removed the rib from your rib he removed one and he formed a woman let me tell you the rib did not have eyes. But if it, when it formed a woman, other, other two pairs of eyes appeared. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore you, instead of, of having two eyes, you now have how many? You now have four eyes. Your wife is another pair of eyes for you. George, How many eyes do you have, George? Unaine. But unaine too. Sikiliza. Unavoza watoto. When you give birth. Probably you give birth to four children. How many eyes now? <laughs> That's why I'm asking, George, do you still have four? <laughs> How many do you have? <laughs> you have ten. Kwa sababu na mke wako ana mbili ya zaidi, una watoto tatu ambao ni sita, sita kuongeza mbili, nane, ya kwako, macho kumi. George, you have, ah. you have two eyes, your wife has two eyes, you have three children, six times two, you now have ten eyes. Praise the Lord. 
Mahali unakopeleka familia yako. Those those are eyes given to you so that you may focus on where you're taking your family. Sasa sio kumi tu. No, it's not only 10. Hata mchungaji wako ni macho. Even your pastor is your eye. Ambao unaazimwa. Loan to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Maana wakati una kiongozi, Mungu anaweza akampa prophetic utterance. Mungu anaweza kumtumia aka akaona mbali zaidi ya wewe macho yako haikuweza kufika huko lakini yeye anakuambia angalia haya na haya yanaenda tokea angalia hivi na hivi hiyo ni macho ambao umeazimwa ili uone mbali zaidi because if you have a leader a spiritual leader it is another pair of eyes that god has given you why because god may speak through your leader to show you far where you cannot see god is able to take you there through your leader Haleluya. Hiyo na ongezo nyingine macho inaona mbali. That is yet another pair of eyes that see far. Kwa hiyo usianze kuona kwamba Mungu amependelea hao wenye uhai wa ine na kuwapa macho mengi na wewe tu ndio hujagundua kwamba na wewe unaweza kuwa na hata na elfu moja ya macho. So don't think that God applies favoritism. No. God has not only given the four living creatures with many eyes. Even you, if you can only discover, you have so many eyes for you. Unaweza kuwa na macho mengi hapa Arusha. You can have so many eyes in Arusha here. Fikiria nikwambie. Let me tell you. Wakati unakuwa mzee. When you grow old. Wale watoto wako si ndio wanaanza kushika mkono. It is your children that will direct you, guide you. Wanaanza kuambia baba usifanye hivi mama. They will guide you. Angalia mbele. They will tell you daddy. Wanageuka macho kwa ajili yako. Mommy, don't do this because they have become your eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Sisi mimi ni macho kwa ajili yako. Ndio hivyo na wewe mwana unatakiwa uwe macho kwa ajili yao. In the same way I am eyes to you, you my son are supposed to be eyes to me. Hallelujah. Kwa hiyo kama nina wana 140 ama nina wana 200, ni macho 400 ambao Mungu ananiazima. So if I have 140 sons or 200 sons, those are extra eyes that God is giving to me. 400 ambao ninapewa ili niweze kufocus katika lile lengo la Bwana. They are given to me that I may remain focused in, on the purpose of God. Haleluya. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Lazima tuwe na macho kote kote. We have to have eyes all around. Na nje ya nchi na ndani ya nchi. Within the country and even without. Na tuwe na macho ya rohoni na tuwe na macho ya nchi. Spiritual eyes as well as eyes in the physical ndio maana hata unavochagua mchumba uchague yule ambao sio kipofu uchague yule ambao ana macho ya kuona hallelujah and that's why when you are choosing a fiance do not choose one who cannot see but choose one who can see amen amen maana badala ya kuongezewa giza unaongezewa nuru because it is that instead of adding yourself darkness it is light being added to you mimi nilishangaa bwana sana i was i'm surprised amazed the lord yani mungu anaweza akakupa wana wa kiroho god can give you spiritual sons wewe una concentrate kwenye mambo ya mungu wao wanafanya yale ambao ungekuwa supposed kufanya you concentrate on the things of god and they do the other work that they are supposed to do tulipokuwa na conference when he had a conference here mimi kwa ajili ya kuandaa mkutano now because of preparation of the conference ikupata hata muda wa kwenda mjini i didn't even get time to go kwamba ninunue kiatu ama ninunue vazi to buy a shoe or a, a cloth sikuwa na huo muda i didn't have that time sikuwa na muda wa kwenda saloon i didn't have time to go to the salon haleluya bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord lakini nilijikuta saloon na hamia kwangu but the saloon it came to my place haleluya nikatengenezwa nywele my hair was Med well. Na isitoshe. As if it's not enough. Nina wana huko Richmond. I have children sons in Richmond. Sikiliza nikwambie. Let me tell you. Walienda kufanya shopping bila kuniambia. They went to do shopping without telling me. Wakaninunulia mavazi. They, they brought clothes for me. Wakaniletea mavazi. They brought clothes for me. Sikuwa na muda. I didn't have time. Wakwenda shopping to go and shop. Lakini kwa kuwa nina macho Richmond. But because I have eyes in Richmond. Walienda kwa duka kwa ajili yangu. They went to the shop for me. Walijua mama anapenda hii. They know what mama likes. Mama anapenda hii. They know what mama likes. Walichagua kwa ajili yangu. They chose on my behalf. Nguo zilivoletwa. When the clothes came. Nikiingiza tu chip. My size. My size. <laughs> my color, my size. Nilivovaa tu ikawa imeni imeni fit. Imentosha. Hallelujah. Amina. Hivi viatu ninavyovaa, the shoes I'm putting on, nimeletewa. 
which has been given to me free. They discussed with me. When they came, I put my foot up there. <laughs> I'm just giving you ordinary day-to-day examples. So that we may focus on what the Lord has called you to do, he will give you pairs of eyes to help you carry out the other errands. Think about the honorable is here. So many tasks are waiting you. Some of you it will be a waste of time and it will be terrible if the honorable can go back home to the kitchen and start cooking, start preparing things. No, you need to concentrate on what you're supposed to do. And there is somebody given to you to prepare food in the kitchen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kwa ndio maana Mungu atakuazima macho mengi ili wewe ufocus katika lengo na kusudi lake. It means God will give you many pairs of eyes for you to remain focused on his purpose. Tell your neighbor. The Lord will restore your eyes. And the Lord will increase your eyes. Hallelujah. God will give you many eyes. People will see on your behalf. So that you may not lose your destiny. That is what God did with Samson. When his hair grew. They brought the young boy to hold his hand. Now you'll be surprised. At that particular time, the young boy became a leader or a guide to Samson. He was like a father to Samson for Samson to fulfill the objective. He said, take me. Take me to the pillar. Take me to the pillar. Let me lean on the pillar. The moment he put his hand on the pillar. Brethren, every day you need somebody in your life who will take you to the purpose. And do not despise anyone. Because the one you despise could be the one that God is using to take you to the purpose. Give praise to Jesus. Everyone. They know that Samson brought down the temple. But if you look at it carefully, it is the young man who doesn't even have a name. He's the one who guided Samson. Took him there. May God increase your eyes in the name of Jesus. May God give you somebody to guide you. Somebody who holds you by the hand advises you. The things you could not see. He advises you. When you receive the counsel, the person becomes eyes for you. The young boy took Samson to the pillar. When he got to those pillars, having laid his hands on them, he prayed, God, I ask that you help me. Give me a second chance that I may fulfill my purpose that I may bring vengeance upon the Philistines and to revenge because of the, my eyes that they got God had him God strengthened him he didn't have eyes but he got to the purpose he got hold of the pillars started pushing them push them now the entire temple started shaking shaking Samson pushed boom down it came all the Philistines who were who are inside there, who had come to mock and have Samson entertain them, they all died. 
ili asifike kwenye lengo so lakini Mungu wa ajabu akamwazima awesome macho akatimiza kusudi akawagomoa wa wafilisini hivyo hivyo ndivyo Mungu atarejesha macho ya bibi harusi God will show the eyes of the pride mshangilie bwana give him praise mshangilie bwana give him praise mimi sijali macho yako yako namna gani I don't care the state of your eyes. Lakini ninakwambia But I'm telling you. Bwana ana uwezo wa kurejesha macho. The Lord has the power to restore eyes. Yandani na ya inji. Within and without. Hallelujah. Amen. Biblia inasema Yesu alikuwa na anafungua watu macho. The Bible says that Jesus Christ would open the eyes of the blind. Anatengeneza macho yaliyo yaliyoharibika. He would give sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeye ana spare parts. He has all the spare parts. Atakurejeshea macho. He will restore eyes. Ili uone vizuri. So that you may see well. Atakurejeshea na ya roho. He will restore even spiritual eyes. Ili uone vizuri. You to see well. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Nakumbuka siku moja. I remember one day. Kuna mtu alikuwa anaumwa. There was somebody who was sick. Kama anajisikia vibaya. And he was feeling very bad. Kama anajisikia vibaya. He said I am feeling unwell. Kama kama niko hatarini. It's like my life is at, uh, 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 at, uh, on the line akaenda huko Nairobi so he went Nairobi wamfanyie vipimo vya mwili he went for tests alipoenda huko Nairobi while in Nairobi na mimi nikaingia kwenye maombi i also got into prayer nilipoingia kwenye maombi while in prayer kuomba. i prayed nikaanza kuomba prayed usiku nimelala later when i was asleep sauti kaniambia a voice told me amna kitu there is nothing nimesha mponya i have already healed him sikiliza nikwambie listen nimemponya i have killed him na sasa now atakapoenda kuangalia ripoti ya daktari when he goes to look at the doctor's report watamwambia kwamba hamna ugonjwa tena they will tell him your body is free of sickness watampatia vidonge vitatu they will give him tablets vitatu vidogo three small tablets ili tu kumsaidia digestion just to help him in digestion hallelujah mimi nikaamka na furaha nyingi sana. I arose from my bed Nige very happy. Mtu amefunga safari kwenda huko Nairobi. I was asking myself now a person has Kulipa gharama ya safari zozote. Has paid for his journey Weu to Nairobi. Kitandani. I was just asleep. Bwana yeye anatenda kazi. The Lord does it for him. Kwa hiyo mtu aliponipigia. So when the person called me. Akasema wamenichukua vipimo. He said they have already tested me. Nasema unaendeleaje? I asked him how are you doing? Mungu anajisikia tu vibaya. He said I'm still feeling Nika unwell. Nikasikiliza nikwambie. I told him listen to Mungu me. Mungu alishakuponya. God has already healed you. Hamna ugonjwa wowote. There is no sickness. Na hata kama unasubiri vipimo. And even though you're waiting for results. Acha macho ya mbinguni ikwambie kwamba. Let the eyes from heaven Ilo tell you. Ile vipimo vyote. All the tests. Watakuta hamna kitu. They will find nothing. Na kama unataka kuwa na uhakika. And if you want to confirm. Daktari atakwambia. The doctor will tell you. Nakupa hivi vidonge vitatu. I give you three tablets. digestion. Just to help in your digestion. Kweli. 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 He asked me is it true? I told him it's it's true. Madaktari wanachunguza wanachunguza jioni wanamuita. In the evening the, the doctors called him to get his results. Wakaambia tumeangalia test zote. They told him we have tested everything. Mbona hamna kitu? There is nothing. Kweli. Are you sure? Akasema lakini utakupatia vidonge vitatu hivi. The doctor said but we are giving you two three tablets. Itakusaidia digestion. They will help you in your digestion. Hallelujah. Amen. Ile mtu akaniambia. The person told me. Natoka kwa daktari. I am from the doctors. Ile vidonge vitatu wamenipatia. I am carrying three tablets given to me. Ili nisaidie kwenda tuchoni. To help me in my digestion. Akasema nashangaa Mungu sana. He said I am amazed of God. Ambia mwenzako Bwana atakuwazima macho. Tell your neighbor the Lord will loan you eyes. Bwana atakuwazima macho. The Lord will loan you eyes. Bwana atakuongezea macho. He will increase your eyes. Kama unataka 4 utapewa. If you want 4 you'll be given. Kama unataka 10 utapewa. If you want 10 you'll be given. Kama unataka 20 utapewa. If you want 20 you'll be given. Kama unataka 100 utapewa. Even 100 you'll be given. Kama unataka 1000 utapewa. If you want 1000 you'll be given. Utakuwa uko hapa Arusha. You will be narusha. Na watu wana macho kwa ajili yako Kigali huko. But ha- people have eyes Kuna for you in Kigali. Na wengine wana macho Nairobi huko. In Nairobi they have eyes. Na wengine wana macho huko Marekani huko. In the US they have eyes. Mahali kote utakuwa na macho. Wherever you are you'll have eyes. Mshangilie Bwana. Give praise to Jesus. The 
David's your eyes are increased. How many do you have? Rebecca unangapi? How many do you have Rebecca? Ine. Four. David unangapi? How many do you have David? Ine. Four. Acha nikwambie mnataka kuongezewa macho nyingine. More eyes are coming. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Nakwambia macho mengine yanaenda kuongezeka kwenu. I am telling you more <laughs> eyes are going to be increased. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yusuf unangapi? Yusuf Una macho ngapi? How many eyes do you have? Una mbili. Kwenye wiki mbili unaenda kuongezea nyingine? In two weeks time you'll have two more eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Unajua mke anaweza kaona vitu ambavyo wewe huoni. You see your wife is able to see things that you can't see. Hivyo hivyo mume anaweza kaona vitu ambavyo wewe huoni. In the same way your husband will see things you can't see. Ndio maana wewe makini kusikiliza mke wako. And that's why you should be keen to listen to your wife. Uwe makini kusikiliza mume wako. You should be keen to listen to your Maana Mungu amekuazima hayo macho. Because God has loaned you those eyes. Oh, tetea Yesu. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ndio unaona mke wako anakuambia kwamba unaonaje tufanye hivi Ben? That's why you see your wife. Bishop will tell you, Mama, what should we do here? Hey, 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 kwa kuwa ni macho umeongezewa msikilize vizuri uweze kujua you know the husband or the man may be hesitant you see you see but listen to her keenly because those are extra pairs of eyes given to you usioe tu kwa kuoa kwamba unafurahia mke ni macho umeongezewa don't marry because it is a tradition to marry or because you want to get excited no those are extra eyes for you sasa yule bibi harusi amekuja yuko kipofu. Now when the blind bride gets in. Wanaume wote wamesema kwamba nitamkataa hapo hapo. All the men here have said I will deny her there and then. Lakini ule bwana wa mabwana yeye ambaye ana square pata anasema siwezi mkataa kwa sababu ni kipofu nitamrejeshea macho yake. But the husband of all husbands is saying I will not deny her because she is blind. I will give her eyes. Nitamkataa kwa sababu yuko chafu mimi damu yangu yenyewe itamuoza. I will not deny her because she is wretched or miserable. My blood will wash and cleanse her. My blood will cleanse her. I will not deny her because she is naked. I will clothe her with my glory. That is love. That is love. What is it? What is it? The Lord will clothe us. The Lord will give us eyes. He will clothe us with his glory. He will bless us that we may prepare ourselves for the appointed day when he will clothe us with white garments. Once we have put on the white garments, we shall be ready. The groom will come to receive us. Kama unaona bibi harusi anapoingia, anasogelea kumlaki. The bride comes in and the groom moves closer to welcome her. Si kwenye kanisa inakuwa tu ni distance ndogo. See in church here we have a very short distance between here and there. Lakini but kwa bwana wa mabwana concerning the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Wakati sisi tutakuwa tayari. When we shall be ready. Wakati tunataka kuingia. Once you want to get in. He will come to receive us in the sky. He will embrace us. Once he does that. We shall be transformed. Then we will get into the holy place. For a wedding banquet. For a wedding banquet. Hallelujah. Amen. Usikose katika siku hiyo. Please do not miss out on that day. Usikose katika siku hiyo. Don't miss out on that day. Maana Bwana yuko tayari. Because the Lord is ready. Kutuandaa. To prepare us. Kuturejesha. To restore us. Kutupa macho. To give us eyes. Kutupa mavazi. Clothe us. Kutuosha. To cleanse us. Kututengeneza. To prepare us. Ili aingie mbinguni. For us to be able Mingu to enter. Mbinguni zimeitashangilia. Heaven. The Kusema entire host of heaven will celebrate. Hakika umemfia. 
they will say you died for this price the, the, your blood oozed out and surely she is beautiful she is worthy and there will be a great banquet in heaven in heaven there will be a great banquet oh hallelujah don't just deny the bride easily let me share with you a secret men who are here here on earth there is no ugly woman there is no bad or ugly wife when you see an ugly, an ugly woman putting on badly Shattered clothes. You may ask yourself, how did he love this woman? She is not presentable. The woman is not ugly. It is you who is ugly. I am telling you, there is no ugly wife. Here on earth. You are the one who is ugly. Because you are not ready to pay the price. God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> you see, it's just because we are in Christ and uh, separation or divorce is not allowed. But you see, if this woman is taken away by somebody else, the person may take time to prepare her and the woman that you rejected may look so beautiful you may be surprised you will ask is she the one there is no ugly woman ugly wife here on earth but we have selfish men <laughs> who don't want to pay the price and that's why you see women who are looking bad Biblia inasema kwamba we are wonderfully and faithfully made. Si ndio jamani? Lakini anasema mbona mwanamke mbaya wewe? Wewe ndio mbaya. Lipa gharama wewe mwanamke atakuwa mzuri. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. You cannot say you ugly woman. No, there is no ugly woman. It is you who is ugly. Pay the price and she will look beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. Utamshanga. You will be surprised. That is the business that Jesus is involved in. Preparing the bride. Cleansing her by his own blood. Sanctifying her by the Holy Spirit. Paying all the possible price. Clothing her with purple so that everybody looks at her and is attracted to her now it will be surprising you woman your husband having paid the price and you still remain miserable you still remain wretched you woman you will, be the, you will be like the guest that the groom came in and asked, How did she get in here naked? Throw her out. What is for free? Tell your wife, We are in the city. Please take a bath. I have bought a perfume for you. No, also get to know trends on how to choose clothes. Now, if all that is available and the woman doesn't look good, yani then na, the woman is foolish. I am sharing with you day to day examples for you to understand the spiritual things we are talking about. We church, if we don't look beautiful, then it means we are foolish. Because Jesus paid all the price and is ready to pay more so that we may get ready for the rapture. Stand to your feet.
Are you blessed? Give praise to Jesus. God will give you eyes that can see more than the x-ray or scan. Doctors will use the scanners, but you will have eyes that see beyond. You will see everything clearly. Like our sister, the way she testified here, how God healed her heart. Hallelujah. And there and then the word comes God is healing your heart. In God there are amazing stuff. Lift up your hands. Ask God give me eyes. Better, better than the scanners, the X-ray machines. Give me eyes that can see the end. Give me sight. Give me sight, Lord. When I sleep, I may be able to see. We may be myopic to think that these are the only eyes. But we have the spiritual eyes. The spiritual eyes which see even when you are asleep. Give me eyes to see. Restore my sight. Give me more eyes. So that I may concentrate. To focus. Add eyes to me. Lord will give you sight. He will give you eyes. He will increase your eyes. Start praying. Restore our eyes, O Lord. Give us extra eyes, Lord. Loan us eyes, O Lord. That we may see your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Increase our eyes, Lord. Give us eyes. Like the living creatures. They had eyes, they have eyes all over. They have eyes within and without. Give us eyes within. Give us eyes, Lord. Increase our eyes. Lord us eyes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 